Yeah, appreciate Buddy for always opening up this joint for us and letting us get in here and do what we do. Uh, man, you know, it's an empty gym. We love that. I just wanted to, you know, come on the live, you know, and I got a lot of people asking me questions in the last couple of days that sort of interview that Jaleel did with Zaid Brooks. And uh, we were part of the interview we was talking about uh, Junior, the state of boxing when it comes to uh, you know the, the the big guys, the small guys, and, and then a lot of people calling people out in the sport. Uh, people called me and asked me questions about how you how you figure you could say this. Uh, anybody can fight anybody, but is it realistic? Man, let me tell let me tell y'all something. I, I'm cool with a lot of fighters. I got a lot of fighters and coaches. That's my friends. But uh, regardless of what goes on, good, bad, or indifferent, whether we argue or not argue, uh, Lil Gary or to the boxer world, Mr. Gary Russell Jr., he's like a little brother. Little brother. I've known him since, shit, I've known him since he was in his mama's stomach. You know, and uh, I, I think he's a great boxer. I think he has a great talent base. I think he has a, a, a skill set that honestly can be like no other, you know, in boxing. Boxing IQ is there. Hand speed is there. Punching power is there. Uh, the moxie, the do the slick stuff is there. The heart to fight anybody is there. Uh I don't think he's missing a piece. What I what I do think is frustration can be a, a, a pain in the ass, to be honest with you. When you get frustrated because uh, you're not getting the fights you want, because you might not be getting the just do that you feel you deserve or, or you work hard for. Uh, and sometimes I think it makes people say, man, look, I'm going I'm to I'm give you what you want. Anybody who knows me, I've always said – the good guy, the quiet guy, the nice guy, any of those type of things in boxing, you, you, it doesn't get you really anywhere. I mean, you look at all look at all the nice guys. Look at all the nice guys. And you can go to any sport you want, not just boxing, but I'll leave it at boxing. And the nice guy finished last. Or he doesn't get what he's supposed to. I think Andre Ward was one of the greatest boxers in boxing history. But if you look at the the gates, if you look at uh, the fights or whatever. I don't think Andre Ward got his just due respect. I don't think he got his just due. Uh, a lot of times fans want you to keep jumping up in weight classes until you run into the monster that, that, that could beat you. Or you run into a situation where it's just you bit off more than you could chew. That, that's what the fans want. Uh, this is a business at the end of the day. Boxers are no different than any other athlete who does this for a living. When the last time you seen a football player tell another football player, I'm going to kill you, or nigga, we see you in the streets. They say when we get on the field, we're going to handle business. That's, that's the, this sport. When we when we on the field or when we in the ring, we're going to handle business, and I'm going to bring it at you as hard as I can. Mike and Magic, Bird and Magic, uh, LeBron, uh, they bring it every night, and, and like Kobe said, Mike didn't have a love loss. He was your enemy on the court, but then it was over after that. When it comes to me saying I, didn't, I wouldn't see, or, or, or if it was my son at 26, I wouldn't have my son jumping all the way up to 147 to fight Terrence Crawford or nobody else. Gary can beat a lot of dudes at 47 because he has a skill set. There's a pedigree that goes with champions, all champions. And it's something that, that's different than any other fighter. So if you go to 47, it's going to be some jokers who are good fighters but don't have that champion pedigree, that medal of champions. And he'll beat them. But then when you go to that 47 pedigree, that monster mentality and that ability, I think sometimes you can outsize yourself. Gary said he'll come in at 141 and they can sanction the fight. He got the heart to do it. I know he'll do it. They signed he'll do it. Why? Why? It's not necessary. 
it's not necessary for him to do that to 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 get what he deserves as as a boxer or a fighter of his quality and capability. Let me tell you this, and this is this is the advice if Gary was my son, I would give to him. You want the mega fights? You want to be the guy that gets these opportunities to fight the top guys and they won't fight you? I'm going to tell you what will get any top guy to want to fight Gary Russell Jr., especially if they came from 126 or was at 30 and moved around. Go slay the dragon that nobody seems to want to fight at 130 pounds. Go fight Burchett. You go out there and do what I think you could possibly do, and you go slay that dragon, and nobody else. Look at all the other champions that went from 26 or they was at 30. Them jokers go around them. You go slay that dragon. I bet any money that any guy that's at 30, any guy that's at 35, a couple of guys at 40 might say we'll go back. Why? Because now they're saying Gary slayed the dragon. Burchett ain't being really called out by nobody. And I'm barring no champions. Ain't nobody randomly saying I want to fight Burchett. He at 130. Gary got the WBC title at 26. Gary can go make that fight happen immediately through the rules of the WBC. And I don't think he has to give up his 26 title to do that. I don't think he has to vacate it. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me I'm wrong. But uh, if he goes and does that, then I really think you would see the Lomos, the Teofimos, the Devin Haney's, uh, the Shakur Stevenson's, the Javante Davis's. I think you'll see all of them dudes say, fuck it, let's do it. Let, let's do it. Because now there's no excuse. I, I've had people call me. Like I said, I, I'm doing this because I had people call me. I read some of the comments on, on some of the joints. And they'll there's say stuff like, why you, why you always back his play when he ain't fighting nobody? There's nobody left at him. 26 for him to fight. Who, who do you see at 26 that really poses a threat to him? Nobody. So he has to fight what's available. And like I said earlier, frustration. Frustration will make you say, I fight Deontay Wilder and I'm a middleweight because I'm not getting my, my just due. My son was in the amateurs and it was times we felt like that. And my son would look at me and say, Dad, I'm going up to a bigger weight class because I know I can put my hands on these dudes. And I'm saying, son, we're not doing that. We're going to take that. We're going to take that. Marvelous Marvin Hagler approach. I'm the king at 160. That's where Marvin Hagler was. And he said, I'm going to reign as king. If you want to come test me for my kingdom, cool. If you don't, I'm going to just reign as king. If, if, if Gary is happy at 126 and reigning as king, reign as king at 126. Don't, don't be upset. At any other weight class, don't feel like you owe a fan. Or that and I can never hang with no rain at, rain at where you are. Because at the end of the day, you've had your title. You've reigned in your title. To, to look at the... My thing about the Lomachenko situation. How many world champions that we consider the greatest fighters in boxing are undefeated? I, I really don't see a lot. Larry, uh, Larry Holmes lost. Muhammad Ali lost. Mike Tyson lost. Roy Jones Jr. lost. All them dudes had losses. And they all went back and reigned as champions. And some of them didn't get to fight the guy that they lost to ever again in boxing. But that didn't change the fighter they were. It didn't change the the... The uh, or around of who he was, it didn't change that at all. They went and they reigned. Marvin Hagler lost to Ray Leonard, final fight of his career. And I think, uh, matter of fact, I'll be one better. I think he lost to a guy named Willie Monroe. I don't know if he ever got to fight Willie Monroe again, but do you think when he was the middleweight champion of the world, he really cared about that loss to Willie Monroe? That that's part of that happened. We off they, these gladiators, 
And when you talk about gladiators, they they go on the field of battle first knowing that I may not return from the field of battle. Secondly, knowing I got to bring my best to the table to have a possibility of returning. And, and, and that's what these boxers do. Uh, if I could take one thing away from the time that my son did have to train with Gary when he was younger is that Gary brought the workman type mentality to the gym every day. Gary trained every day as if he doesn't have a belt. I've seen Gary fight on Saturday and come back to the gym on Monday as if Saturday was a, was a work day and only day I'm off is Sunday. That is what I would take away from that time. Uh, animosity is what builds this sport. There's no better or no greater fight that I want to see than between two people who have real animosity for each other. But I also want to know that when these guys get in the ring, the only difference in them is their skill level, not their size. I, I don't, I don't, I don't look at that. But when it comes to Gary and him getting the fights that he wants, the fights that he feels he deserves, and thinks that you know they're not being given to him, or guys don't want to fight him, you know, I think the whole concept of people saying. Did he price himself out or or not? Or he wouldn't fight the guy at this time, so we're not going to fight him now? I think all that will go out the window. If Gary say, you know what? I'm going to go up to 130, and I'm going to slay the dragon. I'm going to put my hands on Burchett. And after that, you got to fight me because he's the guy that, quite honestly, I haven't seen anybody at 130 say I want to fight him or come back down and fight Burchett. But, uh, you know, this was just for all those people who don't call me, who don't feel comfortable leaving a comment on, 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 a, on a post, whether it's Facebook or YouTube, or the ones that have put a post on there and asked me my thoughts. I had one guy, you can go look at it. He said, well, Mikey went up there and he fought. Mikey went up there and fought Earl Spence. Mikey, Mikey got drugged. Mikey showed a lot of heart, but heart don't. Take their lump on your damn head. Remember, as fans, a fighter puts his life on the line every time he puts on a pair of gloves. Please don't forget that. But that was just that was just my my thought. Uh, shout out to every boxer who's in the gym training during this COVID time. Shout out to uh, you know every gym that's keeping their gyms clean so that these fighters can do it within the confines of the rules of their state. And uh, keep watching because this this upcoming season when boxing open back up, it's going to be a doozy because you're going to see some fights between some young lions that we might not have got 10 years ago. This COVID might have made it with people jumping out the window on fights. So stay tuned and be looking. We out.